we've talked about some of this before, but uh, this is uh, what I've put together is a couple of uh, presentations uh, based on some research the Society of American Florists did. And the first one uh, that they looked at was working at looking at uh, workplace productivity and looking to evaluate the impact of fresh flowers in the workplace. And this was actually done uh, by a uh, university researcher at Texas A&M University in the Landscape Architecture Department who works on um, interior design and how it impacts uh, work, workplace um, effectiveness. And the research that they did uh, demonstrated that uh, people, uh, when you have fr fresh flowers or plants nearby, that you have uh, better ideas. You have increased problem-solving skills, and your, your productivity actually increases. And they did a research project where they looked both at men, both men and women, and what they were looking at is looking at the environments of flowers and plants to see if it uh, stimulated innovative thinking, and the results showed that 30% um, more ideas were generated, and this was in men. Men had probably the, one of the largest gener um, productivity increases with the presence of flowers and plants. We won't talk about left brain and right brain, but uh, it's, that's part of what it is. Businesses take, um, you know, most businesses are trying to take small steps to make their employees happier and more productive because everything's more and more expensive. And flowers and plants can do much more than beautify the office environment. They can uh, promote um, workplace productivity. So this research was done by uh, Roger Ulrich, and um, he's a um, professor of landscape architecture at Texas A&M, uh, the director of health systems and design. And this research was, um, of course, um, sponsored by the Society of American Florist. And what they did is they recruited a hundred, over 100 people to look at the impact and did this over an eight-month study where they looked at emotional creativity and attention demand protocols in conditions that were controlled, but these conditions were similar to the cubicle life, uh, the workplace environment. And what they looked at is uh, under simulated office conditions, they looked at fresh flowers and plants, or with an abstract sculpture, or with nothing at all. And the abstract sculpture is just some piece of marble that was kind of shaped. So they look at uh, how um, the subjects rated their mood, and then they were given creativity tasks, and then they were given a, an attention demand task to, for part of the study. And uh, to look at um, how many new ideas were generated, the originality and flexibility, and also um, creative thinking. And these are on standard psychological tests that are used to study these sorts of things. So the the subjects, we had 36 uh, subjects, 19 men, 17 women, um, with fresh flowers and plants, uh, 35 with abstract sculpture, 19 men and 16 women, and no plants or flowers. Uh, these poor people, they only had uh, 30 of them. And they were assigned to these in the workplace environment conditions. So the positive effect was exposure to unembellished work environment reduced the levels of positive feeling. You know, like just a blank desk, you're kind of like blah. And, but with positive effect, there really wasn't any difference in your mood with flowers or plants or the sculpture. Now, with arousal, was your interest aroused? Um, there was an increase with sculpture, and of course a decrease with no sculpture or flowers, and not really any change with flowers or plants. And depression, it pretty much decreased with all the conditions because most people don't like to be in a cubicle anyway. Fluency, however, when flowers and plants were in the room, people were able to generate a number of ideas that qualified as unusual. Men increased by 15% with flowers and plants. Their um, create fluency uh, with new ideas, increased with 4% with the sculpture, and decreased by 15% with nothing. So, nothing there. Their generation of new ideas was pretty much blown. Women, on the other hand, 4% uh, increased with flowers and plants, and declined with an abstract sculpture. 
In other words, women would prefer to have flowers and plants than an abstract sculpture. They actually would rather have nothing at all. Hmm? Flexibility, uh, flexible thinking. Um, men generated a larger number of different unusual ideas. When there was a sculpture president, the men, I guess, kind of were able to transfer. And some of that's thought to be um, more of the men are thought to have better ge geometric uh, vision, vision than women, but the, I don't know where that research is anymore. Uh, women evidence less variety in their ideas with the sculpture compared to when flowers and plants in the room. So actually, the greater impact was on men. You know, we always think about flowers and plants for women, but the greater impact on workplace productivity was on the men. Um, originality, men increased slightly when a sculpture was present and slightly reduced for women. Women don't like abstract sculptures in this study. So what this study showed is that men and women were smarter in this creative performance tests and compared when they compare flowers and plants the sculpture was actually kind of uh, you know worked two ways it was increased for men and decreased for women why that is I'm not that aware of how that works so what does that tell you as a potential for selling and marketing flowers that it increases productivity and you should be marketing that. So, do flowers really impact emotions? Now this is another study they did. One of the most common things I hear, one of the most common things I hear when a student uh, comes to, uh, as a freshman or wants to start in horticulture, is they say something like, I remember gardening with my grandmother that is one of the most common things I hear, and that's one of the uh, one of the most popular reasons people say they want to be in horticulture. Uh, interesting, Karen, that you said that because this study, next study I'm going to present, was actually conducted <coughs> in a nursing home, and where they were looking to see how flowers affect emotions. And we all know that flowers make you happy, right? Who doesn't like to get flowers in this room? Okay, good answer. Or maybe is it that you just think the correct answer is that flowers make you happy? If everyone believes it, why not? Aromatherapy improves your mood. We all know that having pets make you healthier. But flowers can influence your mood as well. You know, we're struggling at home. We have a 13-year-old cat that hasn't eaten in two weeks. So. So one of the things that we need to do is we need to say, how do flowers directly influence how people express themselves? Do they act happier? And what, do they influence what they say or do? Um, do you even believe this before you have the opportunity to use the flowers? But maybe flowers don't directly influence mood, but might pri be uh, they prime or lead behaviors that it might influence moods. Or maybe they don't even influence moods. So this is a research project that was conducted at Rutgers. And some of the questions they were looking at, are people more polite when they receive flowers? They're more likely to invite visitors into their home or workplace? Do people who have flowers seem to be more attractive? Are they treated better? Do people who have flowers, um, are they more relaxed? Are they more susceptible? Can they be or more easily amused? So like I said, um, Society of American Florists, they sponsored this project uh, and they did a six month study with Rutgers University and with uh, Dr. Haviland Jones, a professor of psychology. And what she was looking at is the impact of flowers on senior citizens and she was looking at some of the everyday challenges that senior citizens in nursing homes experience, um, depression, isolation and memory loss. Those are some of the critical things. If you've ever visited somebody in a uh, nursing home situation, those are three very um, upfront conditions that the, the uh, elderly are faced with. 
So what they were looking at is uh, looking at the levels of depression, social contact, memory, with and without flowers. And they did this with a series of three interviews and to looking at uh, changes in behavior. They had 104 participants, 94 women, 10 men. There's always more women in the nursing home than men. Um, because the men die. Yes, because the men die, you know. Same thing up in Nestus Park. You know, the, the bulls don't last as long as the cows either because they spend all of their energy growing antlers and fighting off, um, never mind. Um, and they looked at men, uh, uh, ranges uh, in ages from 55 to 93. And of course, um, like you do any human subject study, um, the participants weren't informed of the purpose of the study for this particular thing. And um, uh, human subjects research is, is sometimes controversial and uh, the institution of IRB, Institution Regulatory, Institution Research and Regulatory Board here at CSU requires all of us to do any kind of human subjects research to uh, complete um, training and actually I had to do my refresher yesterday so and you guys don't count. I do. <laughs> because you're in a normal context of a class. So um, they were given an initial baseline interview to look at their mood, how healthy they were, what did they feel their social support was, was their life, were they satisfied, and then of course the demographic information. And then they did a second and third interview to measure changes in behaviors. And then after the third interview, they, were, they tested the individual on memory uh, to do this research project. So they were tested on everyday personal memories, including memories of flowers, daily social contacts, and they asked the participants to keep a daily log, a written log, and of course recent social events. And points were given, you know, how accurate were their memories and how accurate were their social events that they had attended to. Um, they put them into four groups. Each group received a bouquet once, and that was before the second interview, the bouquet of flowers. And the late group um, received a bouquet once before the last interview only. All flowers received all received flowers twice before the second and third interview, and then no flowers received flowers only the after the last interview. So these are the four groups: early, late, all, and no. Um, they also gave a group of gifts and the gifts were typically a scented candle, you know, um, something equivalent in value, or perhaps maybe some fruit or a gourmet basket or something like that. And they made sure that all the, the gifts were equal in value. And they could choose an alternate gift if they didn't want the candle, and most of the women chose chocolate. No surprise there. And uh, however, some women considered it to be undesirable because they're still thinking about their girlish figure or they're actually allergic to nuts or something like that. And all other gifts were considered acceptable, but flowers were universal in their appeal. So there are a lot of people that have s criticized this work saying that this is a flawed study because everybody likes to get something. Everybody likes to get a gift. Um, but what they were looking at is how the giving of flowers looked at the moods. So most of the women would smile when given a gift, but flowers changed, they actually recorded a different kind of a smile. And it had nothing to do with how old the women were. So, flowers in yellow, other gifts in red, no smile, polite smile, true smile, excited smile. So you can tell that um, flowers typically got a better smile. And when you look at the age groups, you can see there's really not a whole lot of difference. Similar pretty much for all ages. Now, a small but number, strong group of women had what, what they considered to be 
um, extraordinary pleasure. And d the delivery person that delivered the flower, because it was a, not a researcher that delivered the flowers, but a delivery person, uh, got hugs and kisses. And they were told that the flowers came from the university. And actually, some people called the president of Rutgers to thank him for the flowers. <laughs> um, and mo a few wrote thank you notes on stationery. And 11 of the women did this. And nine of the 11 received, actually received flowers and not a regular gift. So there is some thought there of being. Now, changes in mood. Um, after receiving a gift, mostly surprise, um, some decreases in, you know, anger, decreases in hostility, decreases in contempt, um, decreases in shame. So people felt better. So, other gifts, mostly flowers. So I was asking, what if the gift that they give had a negative connotation because of past life experience? Could a neg gift have a negative con? It absolutely could. I mean, flowers more or less. It'd be hard. I mean, you could have a negative connotation, but it'd be harder, I guess. Yeah. So that some of the things that after uh, during the interviews they were showed they had an increased life satisfaction and a decrease in their complaints about their illnesses or whatever. So what this study concluded was that um, flowers decreased depression. Increase happiness and moods, in refresh recent memory, and encourages uh, companionship. And actually, they demonstrated that the elders, when they were given flowers, they came out of their rooms and spent more time together. So this research, um, like I said, was published um, by Rutgers University and was, of course, sponsored by the Society of American Florists. Does that agree with your observations, Karen? Yeah.